Today I want to share with you how to create a vertical kitchen garden using the Greenstalk Vertical Planter System. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now the first thing I want to say is that I'm going to put very detailed timestamps in this video. They'll be in the description underneath this video as well as the pinned comment so you can jump around as much as you want. And the second thing I want to say is this is not a sponsored video. I bought these green stalks myself and I'm going to take on a little bit of a journey with me as I learn to grow vegetables and herbs in them. So I'll definitely do some follow-up videos in the future. And the third thing I want to say is if you hear water running in the background, that's because I have a pond with a little bit of a waterfall, but hopefully it's a pleasant sound. Now in a previous video, I talked to you about the seven plants, the seven vegetables specifically, that you can plant in August for a fall kitchen garden. Now there's a little variation to that for me because I live in Central Texas in the Texas Hill Country between Austin and San Antonio. It's very hot here and we've had a very dry summer. So I'm actually getting started with my fall garden, my fall kitchen garden in September. And I have decided to experiment with vertical planters. Now I do have a kitchen garden where I have raised beds, I've shared that with you in the past, but I thought how great it would be if I also tried vertical gardening so that I could grow even more. And also because it's very dry here, I'm hoping that vertical gardening might help me be able to conserve a little on water. And I will definitely share with you my experience as we go forward. Now I have to thank you for encouraging me to purchase a green stalk vertical planter because they're made here in the United States by a small family owned company. And since I live in the United States, that's a nice type of business that I like to support. And I wanna share with you that the folks at Greenstalk are so terrific because they've offered $10 off for my viewers if you purchase $75 or more from their website. And I'll be sure to put the link in the description as well as in the pinned comment to my shopping guide where you can get the Greenstalk link and my coupon code. And while you're over on my shopping guide, you'll see a whole host of coupon codes that I have for you for various businesses and products that I use myself and I'm so happy to be able to share with you. Now one thing I want to say about vertical planters is that this can be very useful no matter what type of garden you have. If you have a very tight space, like maybe just a balcony or a patio, of course vertical planting is going to be fantastic. But even if you have a suburban kitchen garden, or even if you live out in the country, a vertical planter can still help and give you the ability to grow even more. Now, if you are familiar with my sweet friend Jess over at Roots and Refuge, she has a large homestead, but she uses vertical planters. And I watched her videos to learn a little bit more about how to put these together and how to grow uh, with vertical planting. Now I'm trying to do this early in the day because it's very hot here. As a matter of fact, it's about 95 degrees right now. So if you see me perspiring, you'll understand completely. And I do have the shade working in my favor, uh, but as the sun starts to move, please forgive me if I have to put my sunglasses on. And if you live in a hot, dry climate like me, you know that the shade is welcome even for our plants because even when particular herbs and vegetables and fruits say they like full sun, full sun in central Texas means part shade. Most of the vegetables that I grow and the herbs I grow prefer to be a little shaded in the afternoon. So when I put my package together, so to speak, when I ordered my green stalk, I made sure that I got one that had a spinning base and wheels so that I could periodically move it out of the way of direct sun and put it in a little more dappled sun, filtered sun, and even sometimes shade. Now, I bought both the original green stalk and the green stalk that they call the leaf. 
The difference is the green stalk original has deeper pockets and the leaf green stalk has more shallow pockets. I'm gonna plant my vegetables in the original green stalk and I'm gonna plant my herbs and my edible flowers in the leaf. Herbs tend to be a little more drought tolerant, so I think the shorter uh, pockets, so to speak, the shorter pockets will be fine. But overall, I think given the climate that I live in, the deeper pockets are going to be best for growing vegetables. Now, in addition to going over the original green stalk as well as the leaf green stalk, I'm also gonna share with you later in this video all about the different add-ons that they offer that help you be successful working with a green stalk vertical planter. Now I want to share with you that green stalk is terrific at packing these planters. They come in very thick, large cardboard boxes and everything is wrapped with brown paper. You can't ask for anything better. My planters arrived in perfect, pristine order. And something that I think is very cute is they include cards from the person who packed your box or boxes. So I have to give a shout out to Damon G and to Dustin M. You fellas did a great job packing my green stalks. And in addition to those lovely cards that they send showing you who packed your box, they also include a, a lot of wonderful information. This is their green stalk magazine. And then they've got some uh, envelopes in here for you to open and you're gonna really enjoy this magazine because it's got so many tips and tricks about vertical gardening plus recipes so you'll be very happy that they include this in your box then once you open this envelope they have a booklet in here that gives you the full instructions for setting up your vertical planter and it's for both the original vertical planter as well as the leaf planter and speaking of these vertical planters, you'll see here on the picture, this one is green. Now, you might have noticed in the beginning when I showed you part of mine, I have the stone color, and they come in a variety of colors. They have the green, which is lovely. They have the stone, which I purchased because I have a stone house, and so I thought it would just blend in nicely. They also come in a great terracotta, and they have a light blue one, which is exceptionally pretty. And the instructions are great and they've got lots of pictures. And what I love about this page is it goes over everything that you can grow in your planter, whether you have the leaf planter or the original planter. So yeah, I'm a very visual person, so I love the fact that they've got the writing, but they've also got lots of pictures. And they've got lots of pictures for helping you set this up. And something that's very sweet on these instructions is that on the back, they have a little section called Meet the Peterson Family so that you can learn about this family that has this wonderful small business uh, located right here in the United States. And the Petersons send you a lovely thank you note, including their telephone number for customer service whenever you need some help. And they also share that they love seeing you share via social media what you're growing with your vertical planter. And they also include some free little gifts for you to enjoy. I got radish seeds and I also got some stickers. And these stickers are very clever and very handy. For example, this one is Swiss chard. So if I decide to grow Swiss chard in my vertical planter, I can put this on the pocket where I direct sow the seeds so I know exactly what's gonna be growing there. Now, as we build our first green stalk, we're gonna start with the original green stalk and I wanna show you this base. I bought the spinning base because I think that this is gonna be perfect to allow me to move this green stalk as I need to maybe water the pockets, even though we're gonna talk about the watering reservoir and all of that, but if I wanna water the pockets easily, uh, especially when I'm germinating seeds, and we're gonna talk about how you can sow seeds directly into these pockets, and so I did get the spinning base, which I think is going to be very handy. I also purchased the package of wheels because this will allow me, as I mentioned earlier, to move my green stalk around, not just rotate it, but to move it around so that I can get it out of direct sunlight when needed. 
Now, if you decide you want the wheels, you're going to receive six of them. And what's great about them is they have a locking device. So you can unlock them to move your green stalk wherever you want, and then you can lock them so that it stays in place and doesn't move around on you. Now, I want to show you in the base here is a drainage hole, and you're going to be provided with a drainage tube that you're going to attach to this drainage hole. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the wheels. And the wheels go into these holes. You'll see them very easily and it's easier, it's easy to differentiate them from these longer ones because they're the shallow ones and the wheels will fit in one, two, three. Now the wheels go in quite easy, but this is, this is a little hard for me to do holding both. But if you put this down on a flat surface, it'll just push right in. Now I want to mention that if you decide to get the wheels, the wheel kit has instructions on the bag. And you're going to notice that three of your wheels, as I mentioned earlier, they, there is a locking device on them. But the other three do not have a locking device. But don't worry, that is the way that is supposed to be. And what you want to do is when you go ahead and put your wheels in, you want to alternate locking wheel with non-lockable wheel and just work your way around pushing them down into the base. And then the directions go on about attaching this hose if you're going to use this. The nice thing about the drainage tube and the wheels is that when you fill your water reservoir and maybe there is going to be a little bit of runoff through the drainage hole, as it works its way down through the vertical planter, watering all of the pockets, you can move this maybe over to an area where that water can drain. Like in my case, I have an edge on my patio and some garden beds over there, or not exactly garden, more uh, flowering plants, things like that. But I can move this over there so that the water will, will drain off into that dirt. Now that I've got the wheels in the locking base and the drainage tube attached, I'm going to go ahead and put this onto the ground. I do have the three locking wheels locked so that it'll stay in place as we set this up. If you're noticing these sorry looking flower pots behind me, know that we have had one very hot summer, almost every day over 100 degrees, so nothing was surviving in pots. I'm hoping to re-energize these and replant these uh, come very late fall when things have cooled down a bit and maybe we'll get a little rain. So we're going to start assembling the original vertical planter, the original green stalk. And I'm just going to go ahead and place this right down onto the base. Now I've seen a variety of examples on how people fill these with their soil. Some people will fill them individually and then pick them up and assemble it in that way. Other people will fill one at a time and then place the other one on top and then fill them as they're building their tower. There does seem to be a big variety uh, of ways to do this. Now each original tier, each original level does require one cubic foot or eight gallons of high quality potting mix. And you want to use the type of soil that's labeled potting mix or potting soil. You don't want to use anything else like they explain here in their instructions that's labeled garden soil or topsoil or even raised bed soil. Those three types of soil are going to be too dense for your vertical planter and potentially could clog the watering system. And even when you're filling your different levels of the vertical planter with your potting soil, you don't want to compact it or compress it. The secret to success with this is to keep everything very light and, for <laughs> lack of a better word, fluffy. You want your soil to be light and fluffy. Now we'll get to talking about sowing the seeds or even putting in small plants that have already been established into our vertical planter. But I just want to share something here because they do mention it at this point. And it says, when growing a variety of plants in one green stalk vertical garden, grow smaller plants toward the top and the larger plants toward the bottom for equal sun exposure. And that makes complete sense. 
they also share in their instructions that you want this to be on a level surface and that also makes complete sense. They also recommend to check the soil daily to determine your watering needs. Do not water if the soil is already saturated and that also makes complete sense. And the next tip is really interesting to me because I can direct sow here in Central Texas, meaning I can sow seeds directly into the soil and I have sowed them before directly into my raised beds and I can do the same thing in this vertical planter. But what Greenstalk recommends is if you're growing from seed, which I will be doing, you want to hand water or mist the pockets in addition to watering from the top, you know, into the water reservoir, which we'll go over once we assemble this, uh, from the top until the roots are established, and that makes complete sense also. And I just want to mention, if I wasn't clear about this earlier, these individual areas are what they are referring to as the pockets. Each one of these is a pocket. They're longer on the original green stalk and they're shorter on the leaf green stalk. One thing I want to mention, when you put your first level down onto your base, you want to make sure that these little uh, extensions here on the bottom of the pockets are going down into these open areas here. You see these open areas. And these areas that are raised will help keep everything steady and in the right place. So you just kind of eyeball it. It'll, it'll fall into place for you more or less. There you go, see? And now this is gonna stay nice and steady. Well, I've got my potting mix here and I'm just gonna go ahead and start to fill my first level. And then we'll take the next steps with the watering reservoir, and I'll show you how to do that. And then I'm gonna put the next second level on my vertical planter, and I'm gonna do it in that fashion, as opposed to doing individual and then lifting them up and putting them together that way, because I don't know if I'm strong enough to lift them. I think they're gonna be a little on the heavy side. But if you've got a strong man or a strong boy around, you can certainly do it that way too. And I know my sweet husband who's helping me film this would gladly do it, but I'm gonna keep letting him man the camera. Alrighty, well, we're gonna do a little math here because I need eight gallons of potting soil to fill one level of the original green stalk. This is 25 quarts, 6.25 gallons. So that's six and a quarter gallons. So I'm gonna actually need a little bit more uh, about, as my sweet husband shared with me, about a third of another bag of potting soil to get this filled with eight gallons of potting soil. Now what I've got here is sort of the standard or smaller size bag of potting soil. Uh, this also came in a much larger bag, but I found that this was pretty manageable, you know, to pick up and load in the car. Uh, but certainly you can get the larger bags as well. And ounce for ounce, they are a little bit of a better buy. So if you can lift the heavier bags, all the better. So what I'm going to do ahead, what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this into my uh, first level. Now I want to show you how light this beautiful potting mix is. You will see you can grab a big hand. This feels nothing like topsoil. This is so light. It's very well aerated. However, to be on the safe side, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm just gonna share with you what I'm doing. And also it kind of helps me here in Central Texas because it is hot and dry. Uh, and this is something I often do. And I just wanna mention, I have no connection with miracle Grow. This is just what my local nursery had, so that's what I bought. Uh, certainly use whatever kind of potting soil you like. And the same with what I'm gonna share here, the perlite, whatever brand or whatever you use is fine. Uh, I often add a little extra perlite in to my flower pots and my raised beds just to try to keep things light and being able to hold on to water. So as I fill my planters, I'm going to also uh, 
be adding in, as I fill my plant, my levels, I should say, my different levels in the vertical planter with the potting soil, I'm also going to be mixing in a little bit of this perlite. And if you're not familiar with perlite, what this does, and they explain it right on the front of the package, it improves drainage and aeration in potting mixes. And it helps prevent soil compaction. And that's what I'm exceptionally interested in because everything that I've learned about vertical planting uh, and specifically with the green stalk is that we want to do everything in our power to prevent soil compact compactation. What are these? <laughs> Compaction. Uh, we don't. We never want the soil to get dense or heavy or compacted, because then it makes it difficult for the watering reservoir to reach all of the various uh, little pockets. So I'm. That's just my little tip. I'm going to add in a little bit of this. Uh, I think this is going to help on multiple levels in terms of keeping the soil light, but also holding on to a little bit of the moisture, uh, especially since I'm in a dry climate. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filling this level with my soil. I'm just gonna use the scoop. It's a little easier for me than trying to pick up the entire bag right away. And also I wanna make sure that I keep this area clear. Already I've got some soil in there and I'm just going to sprinkle in a little bit of this perlite just to lighten things up a little more. And I'm just doing this. I should go ahead and put my garden gloves on. But we'll just get that mixed in. One, two, three. And then I'm going to finish putting in some more of the potting soil. Ready? I'm going to go ahead and put my garden gloves on. and. I don't know if you're in the market for garden gloves, but I love these. They're called Cool Job. I'll put a link in the description below if it's something you want to learn more about. But they are great. And the reason is, at least for me, and I, they come in different sizes, but I have small hands and I sometimes have a very hard time getting garden gloves that fit. But these are terrific because they're all stretchy. And so they just kind of mold to your hand once you get them on. And I love that they have this sort of uh, rubbery insides, makes it easy to grip things. It's kind of waterproof and they're terrific. I love them. Alrighty, well this bag of potting soil is a little lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting all of this into my planter. Now something I find interesting, I could be wrong, but it almost seems like this bag is gonna be enough to fill this, but we'll see, because you've got to fill it right to the top. And you'll see right here, each pocket has some verbiage printed here with arrows that says, fill soil to top. Now I put the entire bag of potting soil into the first level of my original green stalk. And that was, as we talked about earlier, 6.25 gallons of potting soil. And it's basically filmed it, filmed it, <laughs> it's basically filled it right to the rim. I don't want to compress it and I'm hesitant to add any more soil. So I'm just going to leave this be and hopefully it'll be all right. Maybe this is an exceptionally fluffy type of potting soil, which is a good thing. So I'm not going to worry that I didn't get the whole eight gallons in here. I'm just going to go with the six and a quarter and call it a day. Now the instructions say fill each planter to the top with high quality potting mix. Okay, I've done that. And then it says plant each pocket with the starter plants, if you're going to use little starter plants or seeds. And then step two says to play gray discs on top of each tier, lining up holes with each pocket. Those are basically, I've got them over here. These are the part of the uh, watering reservoir system. And then it says stack each tier, so on and so forth. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do this slightly in reverse. What I'm going to do is put this piece on first just to make sure when I'm putting my seeds in, I don't put any seeds in these individual pockets that might wind up being covered by this. So I'm going to go ahead and put my watering reservoir 
uh, into my first level and the directions explain to, if you notice there are little holes here in these watering reservoirs and it says to line these holes up with each of the pockets which makes total sense so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now I'm gonna line it up nicely get that in there make sure that I have each hole lined up perfectly the original green stalk vertical planter has five tiers and I'm going to plant each tier with one particular variety of seed so that each individual tier will be the same, but I'll be growing a total of five different things on the entire vertical planter. Now, when we get to the part where I'm going to talk about all the add-ons, I'll talk about different things that green stalk sells if you want to grow things in your vertical planter that tend to need supports. But for this particular vertical planter, I'm gonna go ahead and grow things that I think will do just fine without any supports. And what I'm gonna do is look over the things that I wanna grow and see as the instructions from Greenstalk advise putting your larger crops on the bottom, maybe your leafier crops on the bottom, and then putting your less leafy crops up higher. Now I picked out five here, but I think I'm gonna take one of these out of my original five because what I've got over here are the Parisian carrots and I love these. They're like the size of little golf balls and I think they're just gonna do really great in this vertical planter. And if you saw my video where I talked about the seven things that, the seven vegetables that are great to grow for a fall garden. Uh, I shared this with you. Sometimes there's a variety called Thumbelina. Uh, these are the Parisienne. There's different varieties, uh, but they're all very similar. And what I've got here, these seeds are from the Survival Garden Seeds Company, which you've heard me talk about before. And uh, that's a lovely company. Again, small, a small family-owned company. And when you go over to that shopping guide for the discount code for the green stalks, I also have a discount coupon code for Survival Garden Seeds as well. And these are great. They're heirloom. They're non-GMO. I think you'll really like their seeds. And they can be stored for up to eight years. So hence the name Survival Garden Seeds. But what I've got here is the cayenne peppers. Peppers, uh, spicy peppers, do amazingly well here. So I always pick at least growing some peppers. And then I was going to do fennel. I think I will still do this maybe in a, at a different time. But I want to make room uh, for the carrots. So... I think I'll just put the fennel on hold for a minute, uh, but I do want to put in some sorrel. Sorrel does really well here. Direct sowed right into the raised bed. I think it's going to do great here. It can survive our cold winters. Not that they're super cold, although <laughs> after 2021 and 2023, I don't know what to expect anymore because we did have ice storms in each of those years earlier this year and in 2021. Hopefully we won't have one this year uh, or this winter, I should say. Uh, but sorrel always says it seems to survive everything and anything. So I want to definitely go with it. And I love it if you've never had sorrel. It's got this wonderful lemony flavor. And just in general, greens, you know, they're full. And in essence here, you know, winter crops as well. They just do great in the cooler weather. Then I'm going to grow some Swiss chard, which I love. And I think I got to push my hat back a little. Sorry, it's starting to get kind of the the sun, this is southern exposure and the sun is starting to uh, come now. Sorry if you're not seeing my eyes, but it's uh, getting a little bright here. And then I'm going to do some kale. So I think we'll be all set. So I think the order that I'm going to put these in is Swiss chard on the bottom, then kale, then the sorrel, then the red peppers, and I'll top it all off at the end with the baby carrots. Now I wanted to mention I did add the perlite, but I didn't add a lot. I certainly didn't add, uh, what would that be, 1.75 gallons worth of it. I really just added in, you saw what I did, just a couple of handfuls. So far so good, This these look filled, so I'm happy with just using one bag of soil. 
uh, one bag of potting soil for each level. We'll see how it goes as we work our way up. And as things get water, watered and maybe a little compressed, but hopefully not too much. But now we want to put on our second tier. And what you want to do, it's like alternate. If you notice, we're not lining it up right over the level below because you want the pocket, you know, to be free and exposed. And this has these little sort of feet on the bottom. <laughs> I took the reservoir with me when I did that. Uh, this has these little feet on the bottom. And what we're going to do is basically just try to lock them in place with these little indents here. And it's really not too difficult to do. You just want to line it up best you can. And then you got to make sure that you line this up with a little watering reservoir as well. And then you're just going to work your way around and make sure. Now they explain too in the directions, things may be a little wobbly, but that they are going to become more steady as you fill each level with dirt. You just want to make sure that they are fitting re relatively snug over those little indents there. Level two is filled, and now we go on to level three. Third level done, two more to go. Well, four down and only one more to go, and then we can see exactly what this vertical planter looks like, this original vertical planter with all the five tiers in place. And then we'll talk about the add-ons. Well, I've got all five levels now of my vertical planter put together. Next, what we're gonna do is put the water reservoir, the big water reservoir, on top. And this reservoir, just like the little gray water reservoirs, also has holes in it. And we wanna line up those holes which, with each one of these individual pockets. And lining up the little holes with the pockets is very easy to do because these little clips here are gonna clip on these little indents. So all you have to do is line up the clips with the indents and just lock that in place and you'll see that all of your holes are lined up with each pocket. Now I am noticing as I'm doing this and everything's settling a little, some of the pockets do have their soil dip, dipping below, being actually 100% level with the rims here. So I am gonna open up another bag of potting soil and just top off my pockets before I put my seeds in. So I just topped off my pockets a little and now everything is nicely filled. The total amount of soil that this took was five and a half bags of the soil that I had. And if you remember, my potting soil was 25 quarts or 6.25 gallons. And I used five and a half bags. So it's a little less uh, than what the official instructions called for but I didn't want to pack down the soil to make a full eight gallons fit in each level because I really want to be very conscious about keeping everything light and fluffy. Alrighty, now let's get the water in here. The first thing the instructions say to do is simply wet each pocket so that we get this soil moist. Alrighty, I think that's good. This watering wand works great for this purpose. And I just ordered this on Amazon. Uh, I had one that I had bought at my local nursery, but it was really old and it finally gave out on me. But I, I like this particular brand and I'll put, it works very well. And it's got a nice gentle, very gentle spray. And so I will put a link to this below. Now we need to go ahead and fill this reservoir with water until it starts to drain out of the tube on the bottom. Now I removed the sprayer and I'm just going ahead and filling this and watching the tube on the bottom to see when things start draining out. And that way we'll know all the little gray reservoirs that we put in between each level have been filled and are distributing water to all the pockets. Now I stopped filling this up because the tube did start draining out. Now under normal circumstances, I'm just letting it drain here on the patio so you can see it very clearly. I'm gonna sweep all this water over to my beds uh, that are on the other side of this patio. But in any event, I just wanted to let you know that it does fill fairly quickly 
and starts draining pretty quickly. And so as you fill this, and then once you see it to start to start to drain, turn off your hose. All of your little watering uh, reservoirs are clearly being filled and distributing water to all your pockets. And then any excess water is just draining off. Now, before I put the seeds in, I just want to take a minute to talk about one of the first add-ons that you can buy for your vertical planter. These are not required. These are just some of the things that I decided to invest in. And one is a lid. The reason I decided to get one of these lids is because kind of twofold. One, because I do live in a very hot, hot, dry climate, I was hoping this might help a little bit to prevent evaporation. I'd certainly remove it if we were having rain. And second, just to kind of keep critters from getting in there. Uh, they have, they're welcome to the pond and the waterfall, which they all enjoy, uh, but I don't want anybody to get in here. I also worry if somebody got in here and they were little and couldn't get out. So this I feel uh, is multifold and it just sits right on top. It's very easy to install. And what's nice is you don't need to remove it if you have to fill uh, your uh, water reservoir up here. Although I do think it's so easy to take off and you want to be able to see exactly what your water situation is. But I feel that this is, depending on your situation and where you're working with your garden stalk vertical planter that uh, this might be very handy and they're very reasonable. And a nice thing about having this, if you live in a climate where you're doing full gardening because you can, and but your trees are also losing their leaves in the fall, which is a normal process of nature, this will keep it from getting clogged with leaf debris. Because you always want to make sure that your little holes are not being blocked because when you fill this with your water, that's how, for the most part, the water is being sent to each one of these pockets and the larger hole is sending it down to the other uh, little gray reservoirs and distributing it to these pockets. So keeping those little holes clear is very important. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sow my seeds. And I'm gonna start with my Swiss chard. I'm gonna open this seed packet and I'm gonna use this as my little handy dandy carrier <laughs> a tomato can uh, where I've got some different little devices for putting seeds in. You may have these also. You can certainly just sprinkle them with your hand, but a lot of these, these little gadgets I like, they come in very handy. So let me go ahead and get started uh, with my first lower level there where I'm gonna put my Swiss chard. So I'm just gonna put a few of the Swiss chard seeds and just gently press them into the soil. No compacting, just very gently. I'm just gonna go around because we're gonna have on the bottom here all Swiss chard. Now the Swiss chard seeds, they're fairly large and they're easy to work with. These kale seeds are pretty small. I'll show you a close up. They look a little tiny, almost looking like poppy seeds. Whoops, see those? So I'm gonna use this handy dandy seed distributor. Let me make sure I got them all in there. And then I'm gonna put this little lid on and you'll see this lid has a lot of little markings based on how wide you want the opening to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and use number one. It's at a very small opening so that I don't put too many seeds in one uh, pocket. And I just wanna mention something about seeds. If you like to save seeds or you wanna learn about seed saving, definitely check out my friend Michelle's channel uh, her YouTube channel is called Choc Chocolate Box Cottage, and she's got a great video on seed saving, along with a whole host of other things. She has a magnificent homestead. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna go and gently drop in a few, and then I'm gonna gently just kind of cover them very gingerly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just work my way around this. Now, I've got some in this pocket. I'm just gonna gingerly cover them. And 
you know, I might have to thin this a little. We'll see. You know, this is my first foray <laughs> into vertical gardening. So we'll see how, how they grow and, you know, and also too, something you have to keep in mind. A lot of times, not every single seed germinates. So I'm just being kind of a little generous here, but then we can always come in and thin a bit. And something I want to mention just about gardening in general, not just vertical gardening, but I have two friends that have wonderful gardening channels. Uh, one is Rob over at Essayon's Family Garden. Uh, he and his family have a big backyard garden, but very large. And he's in Virginia. And then my other friend, Kay, she's in Tennessee. She's on a 10-acre homestead. And she does a lot of wonderful gardening, too. Now, both of them, I believe, like Virginia and Tennessee, I believe that's in Zone 7. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Rob may be 7A, and Kay may be uh, 7B. Uh, Kay's channel is, oh, I don't think I mentioned it, Late Bloomer. I think that's very cute. And they have wonderful gardening advice. And even if you're not in their particular zone, you can really learn a lot, a lot about uh, different varieties of plants and different uh, ways to control pests. That's always a problem. Rob's got some great information on that. So definitely check out those two channels, Essayon's Family Garden and Late Bloomer uh, with Kay. You'll really like them, and I think you'll learn a lot too. I've learned a lot from both of them. I just want to mention a little something that I did. My wonderful husband is here to help me count also so I don't like overseed my pockets but I made a little dirt mark here just so I wouldn't lose track as I was chatting and and overseed things so that's a especially if you're doing this by yourself that's a good little uh, tip uh, to share with you so that's that now I've got plenty of seeds here and these are the survival garden seeds so I'm just which are good for eight years so I'm just going to go ahead and put these back into my packet. We'll see how they grew in, grow in the vertical planter. If they do great, I'll be able to grow, I'll be able to reseed after I harvest all of this uh, because being in Central Texas, uh, for the most part, unless we get some crazy ice storm, I can garden all year long and the greens do great through the fall and the winter. Now, that's not to say that we do dip below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That can happen, and we'll get to it as we talk about more of the add-ons. I will share with you an add-on that green stalk sells to kind of help you get through those periods where you may drop below freezing. Now, on my third level, I'm going to plant sorrel. And again, I'm using this little tool uh, be, and I'm going to set it on one. I find this very helpful because as you'll see, the sorrel seeds are quite tiny. And I just want to say, I know my hands are getting dirty and I'm getting dirt under my fingernails, but I just find for this type of task, I need to have a lot of dexterity. So forgive my dirty hands. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. I'm just going to put a few in here. And again, I'm going to learn exactly. I'm just going to soften up the soil a little. I want to keep it un unpack uncompacted as possible. Got the seeds in there. Okay. Now I'm going to mark this. That's where I started. And now I'm going to do the same thing I've done with the other seeds and I'm going to turn around and get seeds into every pocket. On my second level here, I'm going to go ahead and plant my cayenne peppers. Do you like spicy peppers? We like them here. Well, of course, we're in Texas, so you know that the spicy food is going to be popular. But what I like is that, number one, they just do great here. So you always feel like a successful gardener. Uh, and number two, I'm just going to mark that one. Uh, I love to dry them. And I also love, you know, and just kind of have lots of dried peppers on hand to cook with. And also, uh, one of my favorite things to do with them, and I used to do this with my son when he was a little boy. He always enjoyed helping with this. 
uh, was putting them into a mason jar and then covering the mason jar with olive oil and then putting it in to the pantry, you know, a nice dark pantry, uh, for about uh, two weeks and then using the olive oil, you know, he's a Texan, he likes spicy food, <laughs> uh, using the olive oil to drizzle over cut up pieces of chicken. We take a whole chicken and cut it up and then we would uh, cook that in the oven and boy did it give the skin just a great punch of flavor and a little spice to please both my husband and son, my good Texans. Oh, and something I want to mention that if you've got my cookbook, my new cookbook, the Modern Pioneer Cookbook, uh, in that I have a recipe for making two types of fermented hot sauces, uh, both a red one and a green one. And they are so good because I include a little secret ingredient that people are always surprised uh, during the fermentation process. But uh, I include some pickling spice. And I will tell you that that hot sauce is some of the best you're ever gonna have. And people will always say to me, oh my gosh, what's in this? This is so good. Yeah. So definitely, if you've got my cookbook, find that recipe. And I think that you'll be very pleased and will enjoy making that. Now for my final last top level here, I'm gonna go ahead and plant my Parisian carrot seeds. And I think these are just gonna be wonderful. I highly recommend, if you have not, you'll see the seeds are very tiny, so I'm using this device again. If you have not tried these type of carrots growing, they're so easy to grow. And this is perfect if you have a patio garden or uh, a balcony garden and you're just you've just you, you're just using flower pots uh, if you have a vertical garden garden like this perfect anything like that is going to work really well because let me just mark this so i don't lose my place uh, because these just grow they don't need a lot of deep soil these are certainly in these large pockets you could grow full-size carrots uh, but if you've got the smaller uh, the smaller uh, space and that might be something good too with the smaller pockets on the leaf May, if you're using that maybe you want to uh, go with these parisiennes or the thumbelinas and also too if you have children they're just so fun uh, to bring to the dinner table and slice them up and they're just so cute my son always enjoyed uh, planting them and then harvesting them because they're just these cute adorable little golf balls orange. Now if you sow your seeds directly into these pockets, it is recommended that you go ahead and keep these pockets moist while the seeds are germinating. And I think the easiest way to do that with by keeping the soil moist, but without so saturating it and having the seeds kind of wash away, uh, just a little spray bottle like this. I'm not going to squirt anything now because this is all pretty well saturated. And you just go around and spray everything. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep my seeds moist and watch them germinate. Now what about fertilizer? Whenever you garden, regardless of how you're gardening, whether it's in a vertical plant or pots, raised beds, directly into the ground, it's always a good idea to keep track of what's going on in your soil and what nutrients it might need. There are all different types of things out there that you can use to test your soil. Is it alkaline? Is it acidic? And then you need to know, well, what are your plants like? Do they like an alkaline environment or do they like an acidic environment? Or do they like something right in the middle? And so you've got pH garden pH test strips like this. You've got monitors like this. There's a whole host of things. It's really a matter of what you find most convenient to work with. Once you know what the situation with your soil is, then you can determine what nutrients it needs. Does it need something to make it more alkaline? Does it need something to make it more acidic? You know, all depending on the plant. And then you can choose the fertilizer you want and go ahead and fertilize. And you can also just use a very general uh, fertilizer that's kind of your all-purpose as they often say on the packaging an all-purpose fertilizer can work very well you can use the dry pellets 
or you can use the type that you mix with water. And I think that for these type of vertical planters with these pockets, if you're going to water uh, with a, if you're going to water, uh, if you're going to fertilize with a water-based fertilizer, it might come in handy using some sort of little bottle like this. Certainly you could put it in your watering can if it has one of those nice little sprayer attachments on the top that will just do kind of a fine mist. You could add it to your spritzer that you're going to be spritzing with. But if you want to measure something out, these bottles are great. Uh, they're nice and sturdy too. I'll put a link in the description below. But they have measurements along here. Plus something I really like when it comes to these bottles working in the garden, they don't have the separate caps because I know I'm going to lose the cap. <laughs> I just know that about me. And all these require is twist to open and then twist to close. And if you've got some sort of liquid-based fertilizer in here and you just boop, 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 that can work great too. Now I'm going to put the leaf together. Putting the leaf together is basically the same process. And once I have that all built up, I'll show you what it looks like and then I'll show you the different things that I'm going to plant in it. I'm going to use the leaf primarily to plant herbs. Our herbs do well here in Central Texas. They do well in my raised beds. They do well in just plain old soil uh, that's not in a raised bed. And I think they're going to do wonderful in the vertical planter and especially in the leaf because I don't have to worry so much if I'm not right on top of watering them. Uh, because they do have those little smaller pockets, but because many of the herbs tend to be drought tolerant, I don't have to worry so much about, as I said, being right on top of it uh, if I miss a day or something with a spritz. But probably what I'm going to be planting in that are some of the mints, some basil, some oregano, maybe some chives, some dill, and I'll share all of that with you. But what I want to do uh, is also go over some of the add-ons that are definitely not required for vertical gardening and definitely not required for vertical gardening with the green stalk, but they are items that green stalk makes available to you that potentially could be helpful depending on what climate you're in, what kind of bugs you're dealing with, and also to what type of vegetables you're growing in your vertical gardener, in your vertical planter. Now the first add-on I want to show you are these surround, sort of like surround sound supports. And they just come uh, in pieces and then you just snap them together and you, they attach all around your planter, your vertical planter. And what these allow you to do is if you're growing something that has, you know, kind of a lot of vines and maybe normally you would be staking or using like tomato cages or various trellises maybe to grow green beans so on and so forth like that that's what these serve the purpose of and you'll just put them together and they're they come in different with different the different pieces that you're going to need and you'll be able to attach them right to your planters and then your tomato vines can grow over these supports uh, your green beans, as I mentioned, can grow over these supports. And so I think this is a very uh, clever invention. And I think that this just kind of opens up a whole new world, uh, so to speak, when it comes to vertical gardening. So I will be using these in the future, and I will share with you in future videos how I use them and what I use them to grow and what I think of them, how, how I think they're going to work. I think personally, I think they're going to work great. It's a very clever design. The next thing I want to show you is the insect protection cover. And personally, I just think this is so cute, the way they wrap it with such a beautiful ribbon here. And something that I want to say is that I really feel that if you have a gardener in the family or a good friend and they're celebrating some milestone, whether it's, you know, a milestone birthday, like 40, 50, 60, or a, a milestone wedding anniversary, or even maybe a marriage, maybe a wedding. I just feel this is so cute because you could send them one of these vertical planters 
along with the insect protection uh, cover. And I'll show you the other cover and what that's for, if that would be more appropriate. And with it having already been wrapped like this, it just looks so pretty and I think it's so cute. But that's just me, <laughs> just giving little gift ideas. But in any event, they do sell this and I did buy one. Uh, when it's really hot like this in the summer, like right now, I'll tell you very honestly, and you probably noticed me perspiring, it's about 100 degrees right now. It's amazing. And the saving grace is that we're somewhat shaded. And so that's a good thing. But uh, if I was in direct sun, I'd really be wilting, <laughs> like my plants. But uh, uh, this, I thought, would come in handy uh, when we are in the spring and when we cool down in the fall. And there's a little more chance of insects and creepy crawlers and so on and so forth uh, going after the plants. Although my son will tell you a cute story. Uh, I'll use this on the green stalks. But in my pots and whatnot, especially the dill, I'll see a lot of uh, caterpillars. And when my son was a little boy, he saw the caterpillar. And he, I admit, it really warms my heart when he tells the story because he saw the caterpillar and he was like, oh, ma, it's some kind of bad bug. And I said, oh, no, that's a caterpillar. It's going to become a butterfly. And so it's fine. Let him or her <laughs> eat all the dill that she wants. I grow plenty and there's plenty to share. And that warms my heart so much because he remembers that story. And he says, oh, I always remember mom saying, oh, don't worry, you know, protect the nature. We have plenty, we, have, we grow plenty, we have plenty to share. So I thought that was very sweet. Uh, but I do think this will come in handy from some of the more troublesome pests. Uh, so I did invest in one of these. And uh, when, once the plants grow and I feel that, uh, you know, and I'll be doing a follow-up video with you once this is all growing and filled out, and I'll show you how I'll go ahead and use this insect cover. One thing I want to mention is my sweet husband, as I share with you, is filming, and he had a great question, and you might too, so I want to share this with you. This is a very fine mesh, and this is extremely light. So it's going to let all the air and sunlight in that you need, and it's going to allow everything to breathe. And something that I read, I believe I read this on the Greenstalk website, but I'll have to confirm this for you. I think that it said it lets in 70 to 80%, I think, of the sunlight. It's not really blocking a lot of sunlight. But that got me thinking that not only as an insect repellent, this might work very well at just helping tamp down some of the heavy sunlight that we get, or strong sunlight, I should say, that we get during the summer months. And so this, this might be double, serve double duty for me, but it is. It's very light and it's a very fine mesh. Now, in addition to the insect protection cover, they also sell a frost protection cover. And I did purchase one of these as well, simply because, as I mentioned earlier, there's always a chance that we may go below freezing. And then there's always the chance of an ice storm now. But uh, I wanted to also have one of these and then also test it out if I uh, hear in the weather that we are gonna have a cold night. Now this also, it's very light, so you don't have to worry about it. You see, it's, this is very light. Uh, you don't have to worry about it crushing your plants and it will allow sunlight in, you know, come the morning if the temperature rises, uh, your sunlight's still getting in here. And even if you have to, if you below 32 degrees for the whole day and it's cold, this is basically still gonna let the sunlight in and act like a, like a little bit of a greenhouse. And these, as I've seen them uh, displayed on their website, these are quite big. And so they can fit over the entire container both the original and the leaf, and that goes for the insect protection cover as well. And so you can kind of make a little mini greenhouse out of it with the frost protection cover. The other add-on I want to mention is that they do have the stickers that you can put on your different pockets. I showed you in the beginning, they sent some uh, along with some seeds as a gift. Uh, you can certainly do that. But they also sell these plant markers, and I really like these. They're very well made, they're very sturdy. And you can go ahead 
and just stick this down. I'm just gonna use one on each level since I planted the same thing on each individual level. And this way I'll know, I'll remember, I'll know exactly what I planted. And what I've got here is, this is just something I you can buy at any stationery store, Amazon, wherever. Uh, it's just a grease pencil. And I like to use this to write on my marker here what I'm growing. And the reason I like these grease markers is I find that under whatever harsh conditions my plant markers are having to deal with, it never fades. I've used the uh, magic marker type Sharpie, uh, but over time, even if they say indelible and all of that, they'll fade. But these work fantastic. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried using these grease pencils for if you use plant markers or whatever you may use it on. You often see people who have garage sales and they're even called china markers because you can write on a china plate like 25 cents or whatever at a, um, at, for a garage sale. And it, then it's easy to wash off uh, when you get home with soap and water and all. But for some reason, on these, these plant markers, they just last forever. So what I'll do, what I'll do in the case of like the carrots, I'm going to write Parisienne on the top so I know that they're the little round ones, and then carrots. And then I'll just go ahead, and I love the way they make these because they're made, I don't have to worry about the regular ones and then bending them. They're already bent for you. So you just can go ahead and stick that right down into your planter write what you planted there and you're all set. Now, if you would like to learn more about my kitchen garden and what I grow, and also visit with my son and I when we do some planting together, be sure to click on this video over here. And I look forward to seeing you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen garden. Love and God bless.